This is the iQOO 12 and every time you hear the name iQOO the first thought is oh it's a gaming phone i don't game so i don't care but this time you might just be wrong not only does the iQOO 12 do everything that you expect from an iQOO phone but it also does a lot more and i think this time it's going to be a big headache to the upcoming OnePlus 12 hey guys i'm nimit welcome to gizmo dict and i've been using this iQOO 12 for over a month let me tell you how it is i'm sure most of you guys already know that this phone has one of the best specification set for 2024 you've got the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 very fast storage and ram and all in all this is one of the best performing smartphones right now genshin impact 60 fps on the highest settings not a problem bgmi on 90 fps bring it on this phone is going to handle everything like a champ and the gaming performance is insane here no complaints at all there's no overheating no throttling the phone doesn't complain and it just gives and gives a smooth gaming experience This processor and iQOO's tuning works like magic and that is also true for the everyday performance as well. You get FunTouch OS here which is based on Android 14 and with this update things have improved a lot. The overall experience is very smooth, the animations are nice, you get a lot of features, the design well it's changed a bit but it's still not as good as other operating systems out there and the bloatware has been reduced too. And you guys must be hoping there are no ads or recommendations either, right? Well, yes and no. By default there are none. But if you're feeling adventurous and you turn on the Vivo V App Store and you agree to these things, then that's going to unleash the demons of spammy notifications, recommendations. Every time you install an app, it's going to tell you that try these apps. Every time you uninstall an app, it's going to tell you that why don't you try out these apps? And I don't know what is this AI that Vivo is using. You're not supposed to do that here. So if you made that mistake of turning on the Vivo V App Store, just go to the app info. clear data and cache and your life will be simpler you get 3 years of android updates here and 4 years of security patch so it will go up to android 17 and iqoo has a good track record with respect to updates so i think that part is going to be great here too and when you do compare phones with funduch os 13 with funduch os 14 you will definitely notice that smoothness in the animations it feels nice to use in everyday usage but these small things still need to be fixed and one pro tip that i'll give you is go to the display refresh rate settings and change it from smart switch to high refresh rate because by default most of the apps will run on 90 hertz and you won't get that proper 120 hertz once you change this setting everything will run at 120 hertz but wait doesn't this phone get 144 hertz well that's another gimmick because everything on this phone will run at 120 hertz the only time 144 hertz is activated is when you use this game frame interpolation feature so iq12 has a q1 chip which lets you do this interpolation so basically through software it will add extra frames into your game so you might feel that you are running at 144 fps for example bgmi will run at 72 fps but for every single frame it will add one more via software so technically that's 144 it's the same technology that you see in motion smoothing in TVs it works to some extent but i don't think you should base your purchase decision on this gimmicky feature it's nice to use but you should buy the phone based on its actual gaming performance which is great on the iQOO 12 but this display is a good panel you've got all the bells and whistles here 1.5k amoled 10 bit hdr support and the tuning has been done well there's support for hdr in netflix as well and when you try watching content on different platforms you'll like it the color tuning is good the speaker quality is great there are no complaints or no issues with hdr content and all in all it's a great experience in everyday usage and outdoor conditions the outdoor brightness is satisfactory you can easily see everything on the phone clearly but phones like the iphone 15 series s23 ultra do get even brighter in sunlight but all of these phones are visible and if i talk about the display protection there is no gorilla glass here you get short sensation glass which is something that iqoo has used on a lot of their phones and this one is no different you can always go and get a tempered glass i would suggest you to buy one from gear31.com it's my website you get this really cool easy install tool plug it into your phone's usb port align the tempered glass you'll get a proper fit the tempered glass is completely transparent no black borders the touch experience is really really good and you can pair it with our smooth shield case which is made out of high quality liquid silicone materials it gives a really nice soft touch feel and it also is very very strong when it comes to drop protection so do check these accessories out you can use the promo code gear10 for 10% off pretty reliable stuff you can trust my opinion just like you can trust the battery life on the iq12 5000 mAh and it's more than enough 
for most people even on heavy usage you will get through one full day i use my phone pretty heavily and still i got a screen on time of six and a half hours which is top notch in my books don't go comparing screen on times with other people everyone has different usage and that hampers that a lot what you need to know is that it's more than enough for one full day on heavy usage and even on medium usage you can get like one and a half day so things are very optimized here plus you get very fast charging 120 watts so the phone is going to charge in a couple of minutes even if you put the phone on the charger for five minutes you're gonna get good enough juice and this charger is inside the box so you don't have to buy anything else later on and all of this is packed in a very nice package from the outside the iq12 looks and feels really premium surprisingly i review a lot of phones but the first but this is the first time i've had two three people inquire to me about the phone like which is this phone the design looks different and all of that and it actually also feels quite premium in the hand you've got a glass back there's no gorilla glass here you've got a metal frame and it's a very flat frame the display is almost flat on the front and it feels really nice to hold the weight distribution is good it doesn't feel bulky or heavy and the only thing that i found a bit jarring on the iq12 is actually the front camera hole because it's surprisingly bigger other brands even in budget segments don't have such a bigger punch hole so i'm not sure what was going here iq but i want to talk about that camera bump on the back because it looks massive people see such massive cameras and expect crazy cameras camera performance and that's where iq12 delivers and you might think of it as a gaming phone but the camera is its strongest point you've got a very good camera setup here three lenses one main one ultra wide and one periscope lens it's a 3x lens but iq likes to brag about things so they have slapped a 100x sticker here you can do up to 100x digital zoom and honestly anything above 10x is not that usable on this phone but you can get very good photos at 10x and there's also this moon mode where you can click pictures of the moon but it heavily relies on ai i'm showing you a sample here you be the judge but the best part of this telephoto lens or this periscope lens is actually the portrait photos i mean just look at this pictures this was one of the top choices of people when i went to attend a wedding i had to attend a couple of weddings people loved the portrait on this phone i mean just look at these pictures at 3x they look so nice, such good facial tones, such good colors, such good background blur. The tuning that iQOO has done is great. Even in dim lighting conditions where this telephoto lenses struggle, this phone also struggles a bit, but the, overall, but the overall output is still acceptable. I mean, I love the telephoto lens here. Here's a comparison with a couple of other devices. And even on the main camera sensor, the processing is very nice. iQOO's strongest point is the dynamic range, the bright areas, the dark areas, everything has been controlled very well. You get three color options, with it textured and natural honestly textured and natural were too uh, contrasty for me so i went with the vivid mode there is a downside to it it likes to boost the colors a little bit it tries to boost the skin tones a little bit they look nice in some photos they look overly done in some other photos but honestly at 50,000 rupees i love the camera performance of this phone it can easily rival a lot of flagships in certain scenarios overall everything is managed pretty well the skin tones are managed pretty well too sometimes it lacks likes to put this whitish look on the skin tone or there is a halo around you in a HDR shot that happens sometimes but 90% of the cases this is a very reliable camera because when you take it to the low light situations as well it performs really well a lot of phones have this tendency to make the low light scene very very bright by pulling in a lot of light artificially this one does not do that it tries to keep the authenticity of the scene and here you can see I was at this restaurant called Bastion at the top very dim lighting here and still this phone has managed some very good pictures you can see the bright areas the dark areas all of them have been managed so well and it has not made the scene too bright it has tried to preserve the actual scene in the picture and that's what i liked about its low light performance as well the ultra wide camera also does a decent job i have no complaints with it you can use the macro mode as well where I'm disappointed is actually with the front-facing camera. This is usually the strong point of iQ and Vivo devices, but that's not the case with the iQ12. The selfies sometimes felt a little bit oversharpened. They were not that great. And even the video quality at 1080p 30 is barely acceptable at 50,000 rupees. So I'm not sure what iQ was thinking here, but the rear-facing camera does good video. In daylight, you can see it can struggle a little bit in aggressive lighting conditions. Pixel and iPhone still hold the crown for video. 
but when you go to indoor lighting conditions the management the light management is actually very well as you can see here in a comparison with the iphone 15 pro max so all in all if you love clicking pictures you're gonna love the cameras of the iq12 especially that 3x lens it has made me click more portrait mode pictures then if we talk about some other things on this phone the call quality the network reception 5g everything has been great here the proximity sensor works very well no issues there and the dialer is actually the fun touch os dialer so you can record phone calls and the other person is not going to get to know it. You also have an IR blaster here. There is an in-display fingerprint sensor which works pretty well and the haptics of this phone are also good. You get a satisfying feedback while typing on the phone but I feel FunTouchOS needs to incorporate the haptics better because on other devices like Pixel, OnePlus, Realme, when you switch apps or when you are navigating throughout the UI, you do get a certain amount of haptic feedback that was missing on the iQ12. This phone also has an IP rating of IP64. You don't have wireless charging here and the port is USB 2.0 port so you cannot use USB to HDMI to connect this phone anywhere else. That's basically everything that you need to know about the iQ12. This phone is priced at 50,000 rupees and honestly for the money that you're paying, you're getting everything. It's a proper value for money deal because right from the cameras to the display, battery, performance, everything is top notch here. And I don't think you'll have any complaints if you're okay to live with Funter Choice. There are also a couple of other things like for example, iQ doesn't have that brand recognition as Samsung or OnePlus. So everyone's gonna think twice before spending 50,000 on it. The people who know will do, but for an average user this might be a bit too much because even the resale value as of now on iq devices is not as great as let's say oneplus so that ultimately depends on you if you are okay with the brand image thing and with funter choice this is a really good value for money deal that you're getting at 50,000 rupees and the other options that you have are the upcoming oneplus 12 that is going to be a bit pricey but i would say just wait it out let that phone come watch a couple of reviews then decide it's 50,000 rupees it's a big amount you can wait a little bit more also have deals on the s23 right now the base variant that can also be a good option you get better ui there the cameras overall i would say are a bit better because the video quality is better there the front camera is better so all in all that experience would be better but you're compromising on the performance the battery the charging the overheating so it depends what you want in a phone this is definitely not a bad deal and i would love to know your opinions about this in the comments that's it for my review one of my resolutions of 2024 is to make more reviews in english let's hope i stick to that let me know your thoughts in the comments. I'll be back in your notifications very, very soon.